Today, there is a bill being passed through the House of Representatives called Protecting Children from Internet Pornographers Act of 2011. The bill, introduced by a Republican representative from Texas named Lamar Smith, is designed just like its namesake to protect children. Sounds pretty fluffy and nice, right? But while this bill is attempting to save the planet against the evil throngs of the pornography industry, the actual implications are far more drastic and far more severe. Not only is this bill an attack towards ser internet service providers like the Comcast, but it is also one of the greatest potential infringements on our constitutional liberties. Now today, these ISPs, these internet service providers, currently do not store information of consumers unless directly requested by the police. This information includes the user's whereabouts in the online world, such as websites visited and data downloaded. However, this information is not connected to specific names or addresses. The reason for this is that it leaves the internet open f to dialogue and discussion of any number of topics in an anonymous forum, thereby allowing a truly free platform for all different kinds of speech, even those despised by the majority. This bill states, a provider of electronic communication service or remote computing service shall disclose to a government ent entity the A name, B address, C local and long distance telephone connection records or records of session times and durations, D length of service and types of service utilized, E telephone or instrument number or other subscriber number or identity including any temporary assigned network address, and F means and source of payment for such service. So what does this mean for you, the consumer? If passed, government authorities would have unprecedented access and knowledge of your email, Facebook information including private messages and chats, any and all Twitter conversations, and even your private bank account information without warrant or probable cause. So what, some say? It's worth getting those damn pornographers behind bars and off the internet. But is it really? Let's think about some real world ramifications if this bill passes. There are three scenarios that present the most danger with the passing of this bill. The first is the idea of Big Brother looking into user internet information. Say, for example, a student is researching the topic of the spread of terrorism in his contemporary perspectives course at school. Well, with the passing of this bill, government entities will be able to use that information against the student in the future by labeling them a terrorist. Sounds bizarre, right? But this isn't something new to the face of American politics. It's happened before in a time known as McCarthyism. The second scenario presents itself in the form of divorce. Because this bill makes internet user information so available, angry individuals during divorce proceedings can use the other spouse's intentional and or unintentional internet history against them. This information can then be brought up within the course of the court's process. The last scenario strikes at the pockets of users everywhere. With this new change in maintenance to the internet being financially placed on companies providing the internet access, the price of that service will undoubtedly increase, thereby costing you, the consumer, fortunes in unnecessary internet service provider bills. Internet censorship is a direct and approximate infringement on our rights as Americans and consumers of the internet. It is up to you, the consumer, to educate yourself into what is going on in politics today. One cannot simply take politicians' words for what they are trying to pass into law. Look beyond the titles of these bills and realize that oftentimes in American politics today, the real-world implications of fluffy-sounding bills are indeed great and severe attacks on our rights as we know it.